When it comes to Harry Potter sets, you always are looking for something that has the looks, the easter eggs, the nostalgia, the Harry Potter lore feel, a great selection of minifigures and good overall value. And I think that the Attack on the Burrow set number 75980 with a 1047 pieces and a hundred dollar price tag pretty much ticks off all these boxes I did enjoy this set on a live stream You can check out the link below if you want to see the building process It's about a four hour building time and I think this will remain uh, as my favorite set of the entire summer 2020 wave All right, let's start this review with the eight amazing minifigures eight minifigures to collect in this set We have Arthur Weasley, Molly Weasley, Ginny Weasley, Ron Weasley, Harry Potter Nymphadora Tonks and also Fenrir Greyback and Bellatrix Lestrange along with the Piggy that was also available with the uh, Pirates of the Barracuda base set and I think somebody mentioned to me that this uh, mold for the pig was also present in the past Nexonites sets. Arthur Weasley is coming with his uh, really full-on dad outfit he has the patched sweater with a lot of detail and patterns, a very unique trait of the Weasley family as they seem to be reusing a lot of the clothes over the years. And he also has a tie, uh, two face expressions with one of a more friendly look and other much more concerned, a ginger hair mold and a wand. So uh, entirely new minifigure for this guy. Then we have Molly Weasley and I think she has the most elaborate print of all the minifigures in this set. She clearly is wearing an apron for her kitchen work but also very nice embroidery and overall look of her very mum looking outfit. She has a very uh, nice and friendly face in one side and a bit of a different one in the other. A uh, special hair mold for her um, hair with the ginger color of course as the Weasley family goes and she also comes with this canted um, curved skirt piece that was introduced a few years back and you can see the print in the back also shows that the apron is holding right onto her waist also I think the nicest minifigure of the Weasley family in this set Ginny Weasley comes with a very simple outfit to be frank you can see the blouse has only a single color you can see some of her skin color uh, there is just some wrinkles all over the place in the back, so nothing really that much detailed. Two face expressions with a frightened one in the front and a bit of a more like a confident look in the back and no printing for the legs whatsoever, just classic brown legs and a long hair for her ginger hair. Ron has entirely two different face expressions which uh, a bit of a smirk on one side and a full-on battle mode or just concern mode in the other side. Same as Genie, he comes uh, with a very simple outfit. There's a pullover in darker red and you can see some sort of a shirt underneath uh, with a bit of a lighter uh, shade of, of red. Also black pants, so nothing really shouting about this minifigure. Also a wand as usual for every wizard in this set. Harry, I think, is the most common looking minifigure in this set. He comes with just a simple grey hoodie. You can see the back also has the hoodie printing. Just a simple brown uh, shirt underneath, uh, classic blue pants and two face expressions with more of a concerned Harry and more of a happy Harry. So I don't think this minifigure is the most exciting in this set for sure. Nymphadora Tonks comes with a very cool printing for the front uh, outfit. Uh, I we see her wearing that in the movies for sure. And uh, she has uh, quite a hard lipstick on both faces. The first one being a bit of a smirk and second one is full on battle version of her. And also just uh, black legs but the arm, arms are coming in dark red. So a bit of a uh, variation to this minifigure. All the other minifigures so far has the same, basically all the minifigures in the set have the same color for arms as the outfit. She is different that way. Fenrir Greyback is really cool minifigure for this set. He comes with a really um, elaborate print for the chest hair and the facial hair. A uh, very scary looking face in the front and pretty much the same one in the back but with more of a I'm winning look sort of. Also dark Death Eater outfit. You can see the coat uh, printing uh, also coming towards the leg. So I think that is the only minifigure in this set that comes with leg uh, printing and uh, also the usual black one. So really like this minifigure when it comes to bad guys uh, in this set. And I think my favorite minifigure in the entire set is Bellatrix Lestrange, especially for that hair mold. I think that is a reuse from the previous set. I don't think that is a new mold, but still that looks very impressive. It's not really a rubber as you may expect. It's more like a thicker plastic with rubber finish, but it's not really a bendy element. So very strong and very well sits on her head. I'm going to remove it so you can see the face expression. The first one being more like a neutral look and the second one is also full battle mode. She comes with a good printing for her Death Eater outfit, a really cool embroidery in the front 
and the canted uh, curved skirt piece the same as M uh, Molly has in this set. And of course, let me just show you the last one, the pig up close. Still one of my favorite molds for the animals in Lego so far and definitely a good addition to the set. She lives in her own little den next to the house, as you will see in the review. And I probably should have mentioned in the beginning that we do actually also get the two owls, Hedwig with her new mold for the spread wings, and the other owl I right now don't remember the name of, so please let me know. I think that is the genie's uh, owl from the books. There is plenty of things that this set does right, and one of them definitely is the looks. Looks wonderful from all angles, this is basically the, my favorite angle, the front with the corner uh, containing the front entrance and the pig den, but I just want to emphasize here the colors of the rooftop, uh, the, the lower portion of the roof that is, the, the basically first floor with multiple colors showing that um, character of the burrow, then we move to that canted level that is very well made, you're gonna see in the review later, with uh, using mostly tan and wooden elements, and going up to more elements of the roof with the multiple color scheme, up to the chimney, you can see Bellatrix just hanging in there attacking the burrow, but you gotta say the looks are wonderful, straight from the front and from the back. Uh, okay, so let's do a tour of this set showing all the quirks and features, uh, starting from the lower level, that's also the point where I should mention the element, extra element of the magic flames that surround the house in that famous scene. And these can be of course moved slightly so you can recreate the, the wizards passing through these flames as in the movies. And I'm gonna just move it to the side. We have the lower portion of the house which looks wonderful again. You can see how Bavarian it looks to me, sort of like a German architecture if I was honest with you. Um, and the stickers are quite a bit here but they work pretty well, especially those uh, patterned windows and the uh, masonry or the woodwork in front of the door. Here is a better look on how these work. Uh, I usually do not like transparent stickers on windows especially, but for some reason these work just great and are easy to apply to just make it look very very good. And that corner is especially showcasing that sticker usage which the pattern actually continues next to that corner where Molly is standing and finishes with the window on the other side next to the mechanism of something in the inside. I should also appreciate the building technique used here for that triangular roof. Uh, really cool uh, converging lines right here, that triangle is making the shape, but these guys converge onto that build and you can see how well it translates into uh, the extension of that roof uh, finishing with that little window back there and continuing to the rest of the building. I think that architecture style and the way they designed it, it just, I just love the convergence of different lines, different corners, different angles here that make up for a very good look, especially if you place the set on your display from this side. It just looks wonderful. The Pig Den is also continuing with some great architecture design. Those are printed elements, by the way, I think coming first from the old fishing store ideas set, it opens up and the pig has a little enclosure that's as cute as everything else in this set given the limited space everything is having. Also you can spot that the ground is olive green which is unusual and many viewers from my stream really enjoyed the fact that they did not use some generic brown uh, ground but they actually used olive green plates which are quite uncommon. And maybe because we are here already I can just show you the opening from this side of the set. It's good that this thing is on a single stud so there is a stud connecting to a uh, opening right here so that way this side of the house doesn't rattle when you move it around it's really good convenience so we can take a look at all the things inside we have the chimney which is the flu network and also remember that knob from before this basically this knob controls the switch between the normal uh, fireplace and normal uh, and the flu network which the wizards use to teleport for teleportation you can also see the logs of wood here the back of a beautifully designed bookcase that is also here and also there is a small table with a letter on it I think there is sort of an easter egg I think that is also the magic ink in that container right there so my knowledge of Harry Potter might be a bit rusty it's been a few years since I watched the movies or read the book so please correct me if I'm wrong but I think that's the magic ink and the thing I kind of dislike about this is that the mechanism for the flu network uh, fireplace is sort of visible, you can see the axle has to connect to the mechanism and it's going right in the middle of that uh, play space behind the desk, so I wish they kind of covered it somehow, maybe made it lower and under the table, but it's clearly visible, so something, I think that's quite the only thing I dislike about the interior, that the mechanism is clearly visible. 
On this side of the building it's something I call the Simpsons couch because it's so orange but I like this detail, it's a really nice simple build. There's a, uh, this ocean blue cushion next to it and you can even see that even the corner has details with some flower pots, some sort of a bottle, even a lamp and the beautifully um, implemented window that is just shining some uh, room, some light to this room and plenty of coziness here and on the other side it's just a little stand with two candles and other tables. So you can see the space is used to the maximum on both sides of the building. When you close it, you can just feel how, how cozy it must be, how cramped it must be. But I think I would like to sit here just in front of that fireplace on the couch. On the other side of the building is the most detailed part of the interior of the set, which is the kitchen. You can see the table looks delicious. I think they're having a breakfast. Uh, there is so many things on there, really. We have eggs, we have uh, egg egos, <laughs> Eleven's favorite uh, dish, or just waffles. I think there's an orange juice, maybe a coffee pot, things like that. And in the kitchen, right behind Ron, there is a sink, uh, plenty of um, containers for spices, whatnot. There's a teapot, then Fadora is kind of covering how much space there is, but you can see it's plenty. It also, it's also opening, right, th like that on a hinge, and you have yourself much more of an open space. Uh, and access to the middle section of the room. By the way, I love how uh, different colored seats we have. So you can see the colors in this set are absolutely insane. It's never a boring moment to build it. And here we have the clock tower with so some insignia. Uh, there's stickers, by the way. That must be an easter egg. I don't remember uh, from the movies exactly. So you can uh, let me know in the comment section what that really means. There's a little um, mini sofa or just a chair. And behind the, the clock tower, you can kind of try to remove it without breaking too much things like I just did, but you can see the other side of the flu network, which technically can be accessed from this side if you remove the clock tower, but I don't think that's meant to be. And also there is the bookcase. Uh, it's really hardly visible right now. Let me see if I can get a better, better angle for you. There you go. So it really reminds me of the builds used in that modular bookstore from Creator. Um, really good technique of uh, side bricks showing for the books. Also, a look at that clock tower because I think that furniture alone is worth checking out because not only because of the colors but of the build techniques, the colors are uh, striking actually. You have the blue, the teal, the dark green, the orange brown, so many good colors and even the olive green in there plus stickers add some of the tan tones to it. Yeah, so many colors in a single piece of furniture and I think that is a highlight of this lower floor. And moving up, we have Genie's bedroom, but also you can remove the upper floor if you wanna display the upper front of the floor of the building. It's basically the same design as for any modular building with more than one floor. And Genie is just hanging in her bedroom right there. The bedroom itself is very, very cozy, maybe even too cozy because I think you only have about eight or 10 usable studs in the front to place the minifigure. She has a small toilet with a sticker for the mirror. There is the holder for her uh, broomstick. And also, uh, let me see if I can get it out. The two things that really make it a genie personalized bedroom, the poster for her favorite rock band, the Weird Sisters on a two by three dark blue tile and the Holyhead Harpies uh, with the uh, insignia on her bed for her favorite Quidditch team. As I removed the upper floor, we can take a tour of the upper uh, rooms of the, the whole burrow. This one is also an Easter egg. You can see there's the Weasley family uh, portrait on a long photo. And also that chair is the magical knits making the Weasley sweater that we've seen in the movies as well. There is a basket for the wool. So these are pretty cool using the uh, dark tan ones and a flag piece with a sticker of the Weasley sweater. This is, I believe, Mrs. and uh, Mr. Weasley's a bedroom with dual, uh, dual bed um, and a really cool color scheme for the pillows and such. I like how they tr they use uh, the kind of barrier for the bed using the common train pieces. I believe they are very common in the train sets. And going up, we have Ron's bedroom. So uh, let me see if I can get you a better angle on his personal uh, insignia. Similarly to Genie, Ron has the. Uh, Chodley uh, Cannons, uh, favorite Quidditch team in orange insignia and same goes for his bed. So I guess they're competing who is the biggest fan of her of their favorite uh, Quidditch sports team. Ron's bedroom is sort of a dual level so you have a mini staircase leading to what seems to be a balcony and maybe a staging area for launching on your broomsticks. There is a holder for the broomsticks so that must be it. 
And yeah, that's where they fly from. Uh, it's basically your mini garage for the broomsticks, I would say. And I think we can again really appreciate the woodwork of the outside of Ron's bedroom and how the balcony is made as well, leading to the top of the building, which is the roof, and a small chimney with also extra detailing. I really like this uh, design for that mini um, rooftop, which is nice just using the flag elements. And this seems to be like sort of a mini aviary, owlery, uh, where the owls can reside regenerate and just launch from when they, when they need to deliver or take something from Hogwarts for our characters. There you have it, we attached the whole um, upper floor, so the last thing I just want to say is how cool the canted element here is. It's basically um, uh, just a few angle um, slope made with the usage of the hinge elements, which are kind of connected to that, let me just take it once more, to that bed of the canted element and uh, also they end up here with more canting, so it's I think a, a one stud, uh, like one plate uh, height difference. Uh, it just makes this subtle canting, so it's not really leaning forward, but you can see the angle is just slight, so it adds to the value, but it doesn't seem like the, full, the building is about to fall over, like uh, I would expect it to do. But no, it's very subtle and very cool design element overall. Okay, that is it. That is the burrow, guys. Wonderful looking set. But for the conclusion, uh, let's get back to the Cool Factor Studio. <laughs> As always, the comment section is open below, open for your opinion on this set. Do you agree with me? For me, uh, this set remains before the building and after building in the same spot. It is my favorite set from the summer 2020 wave. The colorfulness, the display factor, the quirkiness of the interior in the actual detail in the interior are amazing, the selection of minifigures is solid, the value at $100 for 1047 pieces is good, and even though I don't many play a lot with the Harry Potter sets, I do keep them mostly for their display values, and this one is somewhere really really high up compared to most of the ways of the resurrected Harry Potter. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, if you did you can always leave a like or dislike if you did not agree what I had to say, you can subscribe and do all these things below the video, like leave it a comment as well, and click the bell button, and I really hope to see you on the next video on The Cool Factor. Bye!